Hey, how's it going guys? JK here. In this video, I've got some great Fallout 76 tips for beginners and advanced players. If you're anything like me, I understand how frustrating it could be to watch an unnecessarily long drawn out video when the information could easily be delivered in a much quicker fashion. With that in mind, I'm going to move through these tips as quickly as possible while still explaining them clearly. Enough said, let's dive in. Guys, this channel runs on booze. Cheers! Click the link in the description to top up the tank. When used correctly, VATS is a fantastic tool. Move from side to side while reloading to reduce damage, then target the head and fire in a straight line toward or away from them. Don't stand too close to the target or you'll miss every time and don't shoot right away after entering VATS because it takes a second for the system to lock on. Please stop listing all your junk legendaries because no one wants your one star boxing glove. It seems to be a bait and switch. Nobody wants them so you're stuck with a wait. Meanwhile, people are wasting caps and time confirming that the 30 weapons mentioned are all garbage. Please check the map before logging off. In the last few days, I've had about half a dozen vendors log off just as I've started looking through their wares. Missions can be found almost anywhere in Fallout 76. It'll be marked as an active mission in your log before you complete it. This is beneficial in terms of not losing anything, but it can cause the entire right hand side of the screen to be lost. Furthermore, objective markers will saturate the radar rendering it almost impossible to find anything. So make sure you uncheck something you're not looking at right now in your Pip-Boy's data tab. You'll be able to focus on one job at a time and stop being distracted by your to-do list this way. If you have three perk points to spend on your weapon's damage, choose all three cards instead of putting three points into one. For instance, putting one point into shotgunner Expert Shotgunner and Master Shotgunner will give you a 30% damage bonus. However, if you only put 3 points into Shotgunner, you'll only get 20%. Bobby pins are highly rare in Fallout 76, just as Wonderglue was in Fallout 4. You can buy 7 from the Volunteer Bot in Flatwoods early on, but they're hard to come by elsewhere in the Wasteland. As a result, be extra careful when picking any nearby locks, as bobby pins are extremely valuable. To obtain the fusion generator, complete the Poseidon event twice. You won't have to do it again. Go the extra mile and explore your current area a little further to open up the fast travel points. Fast traveling with your armor on is a good idea as you have no idea where you're going to fall. For free fast traveling, use your camp, vault 76 and workshops spread out around the map as far as possible. To save money on long distance travel, take advantage of these free travel points. Go to this address to see the next week's launch codes. You don't have to figure it out on your own. Perks or armor effects that minimize item weight just have an impact on what you have in your inventory right now. This isn't your stash. Through Hiker 3, for example, would reduce the weight of purified water to 0.05 each. If you put that in your stash, it'll return to 0.5. Enemies will respawn every time a new player enters an area, even if you and others are present. You've already seen this in the nuked areas where you can repeatedly destroy the same enemies. You can keep spawning new enemies by re-logging in with one account if you have a buddy and an empty nuke zone. Power armor is extremely slow to destroy. For the past one and a half months I haven't had to patch the same armor. Power patcher should not be used all of the time, only when the armor has to be repaired. Don't want to grind for guns, armor, ammunition or other items? Or are you trying to sell something? Join a trading Discord channel for Fallout 76. They're very active and they're a quick and simple way to make a lot of caps and get exactly what you want without having to grind a lot. Finally, you'll be able to sell your surplus ammunition. Use the Ammo Smith 2 to get 80% more ammunition. 
chemist for a double quantity, along with Super Duper 3 when producing chems or ammo. Super Duper 3 will give you a 30% chance to double whatever you make. Instead of making 10 rounds of ammunition, you can make 28 with the same materials. Weapons and armor mods are learned by scrapping them at a workbench. Weapons looted from dead enemies are extremely useful. Capture a power plant and a workshop if you're going to be on for more than 3 hours. You earn XP by capturing and defending the workshop as well as getting the resources while you play. Because it was nerfed, the two-shot legendary effect isn't as good. Instead look for guns that are bloodied, anti-armor or furious to do more harm. Combine anti-armor perk cards such as Tank Killer 3, which negates 36% of armor, with anti-armor gun effects, which negates 50% armor, for incredible PvP and PvE performance. At workshops, silver mining is nothing more than printing caps. You also don't have to bulk it up to sell it. The new 1200 item stash is more manageable. You should be fine if you keep all junk stacks under 350. Do not keep or transport missiles, they're just too heavy. For great XP and legendaries, go to West Tech and clear it out. You get great XP and legendaries drop on a regular basis. The Burrows is actually the best place to farm legendary drops, but they're all one star and lousy, so just farm here if you're looking for the next legendary vendor. Springs are extremely useful. Begin by collecting a ton of them. It takes more than 100 springs to make a complete collection of level 50 X01 armor. Drop a like if you enjoyed the video, it helps me out. If you learned something new, subscribe. If you don't, you know the story. I'll kick you in the face. Thanks for watching guys, catch you in the next one. Cheers for now.